you take a bite out of your Big Mac, you almost never think about the story that comes behind it. You're probably on your way to a sporting event, and you need a quick meal, or you're just enjoying some quality time with your family. Either way, the often sad story behind the meats eludes the minds of many, and is somehow forgotten by the time you are served with your meal. As Americans are beginning to want to know what is in their food, the processes behind the meats is coming out to the public, and corporations are trying to make better quality food. I remember a time when I was six or seven, and I was visiting my relatives in Romania. My grandpa owns a farm there which he is very fond of. I was fascinated, and I spent a lot of time watching the cows and horses, the swarms of chickens and geese that seemed to surround me at all times. One day, as I was sitting in the back of the home with the watchdog, a worker came and soldered a goose right in front of me, cutting its head off with a regular knife. The body continued to move a little bit until that too fell to the ground. As a child, I did not think much of it, and if anything, I thought it was kind of funny. But now that I'm older, while remembering that event, I can't help but wonder how much pain that goose actually felt, and whether there's a better way of doing this. Ever since that day, I look at me with a totally new perspective, and I wonder if humans can build a more harmonic relationship with domestic animals. This experience compelled us to create a website that brings awareness to this unfortunate issue. The things that I found almost drove me to become a vegetarian, but I enjoyed my burgers too much. A major component that threatened to change my eating habits was the way that the workers handled the animals with no mercy at all. As we skimmed a variety of articles, the atrocities which people justify themselves with were appalling. Billions of animals are slaughtered every year for food and are forced to endure unimaginable suffering. Birds are the most abused animals in this industry. The chickens, which many of you enjoy in almost every meal, were blanched in hot water, slaughtered with throat ripping machines, and even by the hands of the employees. The turkeys wander with open wounds, broken wings, and tumors, all illnesses which are ignored. The employees punch these animals and throw them up in the air. Pigs are extremely intelligent animals and are forced to suffer from the employees. The cows are kicked and pushed, many of which can hardly stand due to sickness. Cattle are crammed onto trucks where they go without food, water, and rest for the rest of the duration. This can last a couple days. The uncooperative animals are then beaten. Thousands of gruesome animal deaths occur every day in slaughterhouses, and the cruelty the animals face is an undeniable reality to the general public. Now, these employees have very unsatisfactory jobs, so in order to do them well, they must be devoid of any emotion at all. The employees view these small, helpless animals as one would view an insect, not something that has feelings. The employees are minimally trained in their specialty, so when it comes to actually killing the animal, they might cause it great pain due to lack of knowledge in operating the machinery. In addition to possibly hurting the animal, the employees could also hurt themselves. Because of the demand and the high speed the employees are forced to kill the animals, injury is almost inevitable. Activists are hiding cameras in these large corporations and slaughterhouses, exposing the violence. They then put, place this footage on the internet for people like you to watch. However, let's not dwell too much on this topic for obvious reasons. I have always been a vegetarian, and it never stopped surprising me that people can eat meat without once thinking how they would feel like if the animal was eating them. However, I do understand where meat eaters come from as much as the United States is one. Most of my family is vegetarian, so it made sense for me to be one too. However, I'm also a vegetarian because of personal beliefs. I've always had a different perspective of eating meat, and I think it is one of the most inhuman things. At times, I do feel secluded from other people because I'm vegetarian. But after I researched this topic further, I came to realize the atrocities that millions of animals face every day in slaughterhouses. And after realizing this, I came to feel more appreciative of being a vegetarian. With everyone making sure that there is no animal cruelty, people disregard a more important thing, and that is human life. No one ever thinks about the effects that these humans face in these slaughterhouses. The psychological impact that comes with killing defenseless animals on a daily basis erodes at the minds of many employees, and unlike other jobs, these employees are forced to take these experiences home. Before actually killing the animal, the employees develop a somewhat strong bond with it, making the act of killing the animal that much harder. A former hog slaughterhouse worker said, the worst thing, worse than physical danger, 
is the emotional toll. If you work in the stick pit where the hawks are killed for any period of time, you develop an attitude that lets you kill things but doesn't let you care. You may look a hog in the eye that's walking around down in the blood pit with you and think, God, that really isn't a bad looking animal. You may want to pet it. Pigs down on the kill floor have come up and nose with me like a puppy. Two minutes later, I had to kill them. I can't care. Animal rights activists protesting outside of these large corporation slaughterhouses bash the employees' negative feed. Now remember, these people need to make money as well. These actions drive the employees to abuse drugs, alcohol, result in domestic violence, and severe anxiety, among other things. Amy Fitzgerald, a criminologist at the University of Windsor, found a strong correlation between the location of a slaughterhouse and the crime rates in the area. People immediately concluded that the crime was coming from the large concentration of men in one area. However, Fitzgerald was able to prove that the crime was actually coming from the slaughterhouses by comparing the crime rates to other factory regions. The bottom line is, animals are intelligent beings who can feel, and the employees sense compassion but are forced to say, I don't care. This method of mass producing meat is not only hurting the animals, but also the people. Now, our objective was not to gross you out. However, if this presentation um, has inspired you to change your ways, then there are many options for you, other than the traditional ones which many of you may have first thought of. I have never eaten meat in my life before, except for a couple times an accident, thanks to my friends and Taco Bell. <laughs> when I was younger, I had to eat whatever my parents gave me. But now that I'm a teenager, I can make all decisions for myself. Well, not all decisions but at least I can choose what kind of food that I eat. Now that I'm older, I still choose to be vegetarian. However, the purpose of this presentation is not to tell you to become a vegetarian, but instead to bring awareness to the animal abuse that most people are oblivious to. Vegetarianism definitely is an option for you, but you should know that it will take a lot of time and dedication. Most people seem to have the idea that vegetarian foods lack the adequate nutrients. However, a diet that is composed of fruits, vegetables, beans, and lentils provide you with the same source of nutrition as meat. Now, how many of you have attempted a vegetarian diet but failed because it was too hard? I understand because I also attempted one of these vegetarian diets, and it lasted for a grand total of three days. Like you, I failed because my family has always been a meat-eating family. But you see, some vegetarian just missed the point. You can't expect someone to just start eating carrots three times a day. And like a Times reporter once said, if God wanted us to eat lettuce, he just wouldn't have given us tea. There are many options to this um, issue. However, many of you probably first thought of becoming vegetarian. However, like Austin said, this is extreme and can be very difficult to do. A less extreme yet equally effective option is buying free range animal products. Although this food is more expensive than non-free range or non-cage free animal products, it is a more feasible option than other goals. Contrary to what Sylvia just said, by eating more vegetables, you reduce your chance of getting America's number one and two killers, heart disease and cancer. This has, proven, this has been proven by large research studies, such as the Oxford Vegetarian Study. In addition, it has been advocated for by political leaders, such as Benjamin Franklin, Lincoln, and Gandhi. Because vegetables carry less fat, meat, or fat and uh, cholesterol, and instead fibers and antioxidants, you increase your will to do things, therefore making you more productive. As children, it was only natural to push away your daily dose of broccoli, and adopting a vegetarian diet can be hard for someone who is not used to eating fruits and vegetables on a daily basis. Now the website that we created talks about the impact that slaughterhouses have on the people, the animals, and a large variety of um, of options that come with this issue. This website is accessible via Google. When you put all of the effects of the slaughterhouses next to the benefits, you can clearly see that the negatives greatly outweigh the positives. Cruelty towards animals does not only happen in America. Recently, a slaughterhouse in England was shut down because of animal cruelty. There are corporations out there that are attempting to put an end to this, such as PETA, which advocates veganism. Even though this industry provides many jobs, mainly to minorities, this practice has been known to create post-traumatic stress disorder in its employees. So now you ask, how can we prevent this? You can still be a meat eater, 
but you can buy from small farms or from corporations that have declared themselves to be cruelty free. In addition, alternatives provide you with the same source of nutrition as meat. Animal abuse is a less understood reality, and it thus raises troublesome questions about our relationships to animals. When both animals and humans are being hurt, where is the sense to continue? Thank you.